2000 is peak brightness, 384 local dimming zones, 10 watt per channel stereo speakers. The P-Series Quantum X is Vizio's total assault on the high-end TV market and in this video we unbox it and show you how to set it up. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover. And on this channel, we bring you the tech of entertainment. So we do unboxings, demos, comparisons, tips, as well as real world reviews of TVs like these to help you find the best devices and get the most out of them. So if you're into that, then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. As I said at the beginning of the year, I want to check out as many of the 2019 4K HDR TVs as I possibly can. And I've checked out a lot of them so far from the LG OLED to the Samsung QLEDs. And I've received a lot of comments saying that I should check out the Sony X950G, which I did. You can check it out in the card linked up there. But a lot of other comments said that I should also check out the Vizio P-Series Quantum X. So here we are. Now, as I said in the intro, this TV is Vizio's assault on the high-end market because it has so many high-end features like full array local dimming and a very high peak brightness, but it comes in at a very good price. Now, if you want to purchase this TV, I've left links in the description where you can do that and also help out the channel at the same time. Win-win, right? All right, let's get to it. Now, let's see what is inside this box. First up is <laughs> so first up is the quick setup guide. Then we have the accessories box. In the box we have the remote, power cable, a pair of batteries, and screws for the feet. And of course we have stand leg one and stand leg two, all shiny and chrome. All right, let's get this box off and see this thing. If you've seen any of my other unboxing videos, then you know that if you want a flat surface to put the TV on, then you can use the box that the TV came in and use the styrofoam as supports in the box. So place them in there strategically so you have a firm flat surface. Perfect. So to get the TV out of the box, you'll of course need assistance. And I, as always, have the help of my lovely assistant. I like this shirt, by the way. If you like it too and want to get one for yourself or one like this, then you can check out the merch store where you have these designs as well as others. Now to lift the TV out, you can always use these cutouts that are in the plastic. That's what video says, use the handles to remove the TV, but I'm a rebel, so I will do it the way I always do it, which is like this. Feet are labeled R and L for left and right, and they can only be installed one way. So this is where we'll be using those four screws that come included in the packaging. You just slide the stand in. It can only go in one way, as I said, and then they get screwed. Be careful not to over tighten them. One and two and done. The TV comes in 65 and 75 inch screen sizes. It has Vizio SmartCast OS. It supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, and hybrid log gamma HDR, like this video. It also has quantum dots for wide color gamut support and an octa-core picture processor. It's a full array local dimming TV with 384 local dimming zones. It has one USB port and five HDMI 2.0 ports, with HDMI 1 having the audio return channel. Oh, so it recognized my receiver off the bat. That's cool. I have the receiver connected to HDMI 1, which is the audio return channel. And as you can see up top, it recognized it straight off the bat. All right, so setup language, of course, English. I did French in high school, but I remember nothing of it. Home use. Then you select your location 
and after that, your Wi-Fi network. And yes, I know Wi-Fi only has two eyes, but I chose to use three. It was definitely a typo, but I found it hilarious, so I let it stay. And now your TV will download whatever firmware updates that it needs. This may take a while, depending on the speed of your internet connection, of course. Then you can choose the room that the TV is located in, and that's how the OS will actually name the TV. So when I select Den, it'll be called Den TV. Pretty creative. And now, if you have terrestrial TV, then this is where you actually set it up. And the TV will scan through and search for channels that it picks up. But since I don't, I have a cable box, then I can skip this part. You can always go back to it in the settings app or with the SmartCast mobile app. Now on this screen, if you want to use any of the SmartCast features, you have to accept all of these. Recently, I've typically not accepted these policies and then enable them or accept them whenever I need to use a specific service. And if I don't use the service, then I don't need to accept their policies. But in this case, if you want to use the SmartCast service then or the SmartCast feature, then you'll have to accept all of them. I will not accept the viewing data conditions though. The automated content recognition, which basically recognizes what you're watching and then uh, share that data with um, authorized partners, as they say. But I'll decline that. Yes, decline. And I will skip registration as well. Now what this screen is saying is that my activity if I agree to it, my activity will be anonymously recorded and used to display relevant content to me in the SmartCast TV app. And I think that for my assessment, I have to do this or I have to accept it just to see how well it works. But your mileage may vary. You may or may not want to accept it. So I've not found a way to actually use the universal or use the remote control as a universal remote control which is interesting now if we look at the input selection you can see some blooming around the highlighted areas i mean even though it's a full array local dimming tv it's not an oled it's not an emissive tv so there will be some amount of blooming So first impressions of this TV, it has a really premium design, which I really like. The bezels are thin and the edges have a textured jewel-like finish, which really help bring off the premium look. The remote is also pretty premium. It actually has a metal housing, I almost dropped it, <laughs> has a metal housing and the front is a soft touch plastic, which actually feels pretty nice. But beyond that, as you can see, the picture looks very good. During my time setting up the TV, I actually saw some haloing on the brighter objects on screen, but I will actually see just how well the screen performs in my upcoming screen test. I did one with the Sony X950G and I plan to do one with this as well. During my time reviewing that TV, I actually created an HDR full array local dimming backlight test, which I plan to use with this TV. I will also be getting more in depth with my testing of the screen, so you should definitely stick around for that. Now, like with every other TV I review on this channel, I like to do some demos. So I'll be doing the gaming demo, of course, with the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro, as well as a comparison, I think. Um, I actually want to do one with the best streaming services so you can see how good movies look on this TV if you want to see that. And of course, the full review. Now, I reviewed a lot of TVs this year and during that time, I've gotten a lot of recommendations and feedback from you, the viewers, and I like to incorporate those feedback elements 
where it makes sense in my video so I could make them better of course. So if you have any thoughts or anything you want to see then let me know in the comments and I will do my best to incorporate it. Also if you like any of these t-shirts that you've seen us wear in the videos then make sure to get one for yourself in the merch store. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, this has been your friend and neighborhood villa man saying peace.